Please rise for prayer. This Christmas message, I've entitled it, The Scandal of the Season. And the words I'm especially thinking of this evening, verse 7, And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit this evening to enlighten our minds and our souls that we may see this story afresh, this living story of the Savior of all, who in great humility comes to us. May we wonder at that humility, wonder at this babe in Bethlehem, for he comes in great humility, and that by such means brings us salvation. In his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I was out and about earlier today, and I can tell you, and I can see, and you can probably see it yourself, so much celebrating that's going on. And I know because, of course, I get drawn into this worldliness as well. And usually have to make at least one more trip to a store before I I come here. And I can assure you, it doesn't matter where you are in the country, the traffic is, is terrific. Carts loaded, people panicking, horns honking. There's a lot of that sort of celebrating. But few really celebrate the true Christmas of the worship of God who would dare, dare to become one of us, born as a babe, as one of us, to live as one of us, to even die as humans die, all to save us from our sin. Few can embrace the scandal of it all. Now, if you've been a Christian all of your life or even for a long time, maybe the radical nature of our faith has lost its edge. And maybe you say, what is the pastor talking about? What scandal is this? The scandal of what we believe as Christians was made most real to me some years ago by a man who approached me in a church parking lot. And I know he must have come from a Muslim background because he said to me, you believe that Jesus is God and he wore diapers. It came out short and to the point before he looked down at the ground and he walked away. The diaper description of our God has always stayed with me most powerfully. The radical nature of our faith that God became one of us in every way except sin was reinstilled in my faith walk. So when I gaze upon a nativity scene, it's not the cuteness or the quaintness Nor is it the nostalgia that hits me the hardest when I see that scene. It's the utter helplessness of Jesus Christ, of our God. And that's the utter humanity of the Christ. The Muslim man was uncomfortable with this idea that God became a human being that he dared to assume this weak human flesh that you and I both have. The man was uncomfortable even with the thought of Jesus, the Christ child, as a prophet who did not have the capacity to even preach like a prophet from the cradle, to speak. In his holy book, the Quran says, 
that Jesus spoke even while he was lying in a cradle. Now, before we all get holier than thou, Christians have also been uncomfortable with the thought of the helpless Christ child. The apocryphal books, the books that we know should never have been, never even considered to become on par with our Holy Bible, like the Arabic infancy gospel, has that same sort of story of the Christ child who speaks, of the Christ child who performs wondrous miracles. Who copied from whom? Doesn't really matter. Christians wanted to believe it, that Jesus, the child, was, was not so helpless. We want to believe that the Christ child was there protecting the Holy Family from robbers and animals and even a dragon. We really don't want to see the fully human Christ. But we have God's word rather than stories. That the word spoke, this word spoke of a human infant a vulnerable infant, a dependent infant. He was wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid in a manger. And these signs of weakness will see pointing to his ultimate embracing of weakness, the ultimate embracing of weakness, which is death. Death for our sins. Death for our salvation. Swaddling cloths their binding cloths. This will be a sign to you, proclaimed the angel to the shepherds. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. He, the Savior of all, would not be found wearing royal purple in a bed of satin and carved headboards. He was found wrapped in ordinarily, ordinary strips of cloth as was the custom of that time, like any other child, to show his lowered humanity further, he would not be just in some roughly hewn cradle. He would be there in a manger, a feeding trough for animals. Jesus did not speak audibly, yet he spoke the silent word was pleading by means of these signs. And the signs spoke for him concerning his sacrifice. He was helpless. He was bound. Throughout his life, he, the king of all, walked from birth in deference to lowly kings. He walked in humiliation. And at his life's end, Jesus would be wrapped in a similar way as he had been born and wrapped and laid in a manger. Coarse linen strips. But this time, at the end of his life, he was placed in a cavernous place of the tomb. These linen strips bound him in life, but they would not bind him in death. Peter and John raced to the tomb and they saw the linen strips lying there and the face cloth which had been over Jesus' face folded up by itself and laid aside. By means of humiliation, Jesus would rise in exaltation right through those linen strips right into divine glory and taking his human nature he plans on returning in human nature and his divine nature, divine and human. He shall return in great glory of all the heavenly hosts attending his angelic armies. The silent word who is pleading seems so scandalous to the world and those who contemplate it can't get their mind around it. It takes the Holy Spirit to get your mind around it. By nature, we want the Christ of the apocryphal tales, who speaks from his cradle, who renders his wrath upon his enemies. But by faith, by faith we can be drawn to the humble Savior, 
to the Christ child who cannot even speak with his voice. By God's grace, it's easy to embrace him, for he is weak, he is vulnerable, he is fully human, and that makes it so that he understands me, and he understands you and all your trials, and in his weakness, he has the ability to die for us, that he might save us. This is the scandal of the season. And by God's grace, working through his word, I may believe it, and I may be transformed by it. And so may you. Such is my Christian prayer. Such may be your Christian prayer as well. See the Christ child. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise for a blessing.